Right, listed in alphabetical order. Me, hi, it's me. Surprise, shocker, right? Dave, hi Dave. Hi. We have a Fritchie. Hi. We have a Rocky, who is our DM, who many people here probably have not met compared to all the others. Hi, Dave. Hi, Rocky. Hello, everyone. I hope to either excite or disappoint. We'll see which. If we all survive, it's disappointing. And a Vixie. Hi. Also is here, which is equally not shocking, because we're all supposed to be here. Okay, so a little bit of background here, I do suppose. Uh, we are working within the Wild Mount campaign, made very quite famous by uh, one other D and D uh, streaming uh, known as Critical Role. Uh, this campaign will not be in supreme line with what is current. Now, while Wild Mount was written with the events up to around episode 50. There may be names dropped, but there will not be characters seen from the other one. Consider this a very unique adventure concerning these chuckles. That said, uh, you know, that does beg the question. Yes, it does beg the question, where are we? Let's actually get to the map. That is so gigantic that it needs to load in forever. Oh, there it is. Our adventure starts in Hupperdoo. Each of you had come to Hupperdoog for a reason, or a pair of reasons, depending upon if you were coming together. Please, let's actually skip that. Uh, each of you had come to Hupperdoog because there is a festival coming up, which is actually happening tomorrow night. It is around the late afternoon, and you have all actually gotten to know each, know each other over the previous day. Some new faces, some not quite as new, a bit more familiar, some having been traveled the entire way, some having a previous encounter. And you have found good lodgings-ish in Lower Hupperduke in a nice little inn called the Bill and Bull. So please, as we sit ourselves in the common room of the Bill and Bull, fire crackling over to one side, chairs, places to lounge, tables, only a small few of other patrons just lounging about or sleeping in their own rooms or even gone up to Upper Hupperduke as the, uh, ooh, Hupperduke with two Ps, has gone up to Hupperduke in the Upper Hupperduke. Ooh, that'll be a twist of the tongue right there. But they've gone up for the nightlife. Those in Hupperduke, you work hard, you play hard. But before we get to either the working or the playing, let's have character introductions. And since someone was ever so insistent on the alphabetical order, let's go with that alphabetical order. Dark. I suppose that was fairly self-inflicted. That's fair. So I am a tiefling. Hi. I am a six-foot... And strange, um, pale blue tiefling with surprisingly bright, bright blue, bright blue hair. Uh, I have very, very, very black, um, solid black pupilless eyes. It's just black, black, and more black. Um, I'm wearing very dark clothes, and I have a pale blue tail, which is shocking considering it's exactly the same color as my skin. Um, which is basically sort of wrapped around my body and sort of the top sits on my shoulder. It's about four and a half feet long. And my name is Peleos. Hi. Peleos, who else do you happen to know in this party and what brought you here? Um, I'm here because um, I'm currently on 
extended leave from current employment. Um, so I thought I have some spare money. Um, my employer has gone travelling and didn't need me to accompany them. So I've got some spare change. I thought I'd go travelling. Heard there was a festival in town. Um, I do recognise the human in the group because we encountered each other in a city further south called Sadash a while ago. And we're travelling together for a couple of days. All right, well, that does follow after Palaios has shown himself. We do have someone maybe a little bit more. Dave, if you could introduce your character. So I have, I am probably the tall, the tallest dwarf you've ever seen at four foot two. Uh, oh, I mean shortest, obviously. Um, I'm just normal skinned dwarf dark brown hair blue eyes and uh most of my armor is blue with metal colors obviously and there's this small little detail that there's a dragon constantly following me and my name which is going to make everyone groan is a vequeel bone wheel And internal groan from the audience. There we go. Fritchie likes puns too much. <laughs> yes, speaking of this tiny little pseudo dragon, it's not your usual coloration of browns or dark reds, is it? It's, uh, it's teal, isn't it? It's yeah. definitely quite teal quite teal and you have named it it's uh it's called baja baja with a j mind you yeah and uh it 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 it, it, it tends to follow me but it doesn't tend to listen to me as most pets do but that's how they go. And moving on to the other side of the height spectrum, Fritchie, introduce your character. I mean, if my size was also just three feet shorter than my master, I wouldn't listen either. But I'm not playing his pet. Instead, I am playing Bellanor, an elven acolyte from Uthodon, who is actually exactly the other side of the spectrum. He's the highest elf around. Am I still too low? Okay, that's weird. Apparently. Can you fix your stuff? You're at 200% now. Hmm, I can't boost things from my side. Fritch is a nearly mute elf. Okay. Soft spoken as the wind. Something is weird here. Um, am I at least audible? That's something for starters. Or am I too low in general? No, that's okay. It's good now, at least from my end. Yeah, it's good now. Discord is weird. We should have used TeamSpeak. Anyway, what, what was I? Let's take this from start. So, Bellano is an elven druid. He's the highest elf you've probably met. I think he's mm. about as tall as elves go. Tallest elf around. He is an interesting character because he's both non trusting of people, but also quite liked by people. And while he's an acol a druid that was an acolyte, he's not particularly religious. And he's here for fun. He has lived in Northodon for most of his life, so he figured he should start traveling. 
And what a better way to get away from the wild than coming to a nice, bustling, tinkering, smelting city and seeing the nightlife of a city that almost never sleeps. Exactly. Leaving last. Oh, I'm next on the list. Hmm. Well, hi, everybody. I'm your GM. I'm everybody else in the world. Moving on. Bixie, introduce your character. My character is Lazana Felwyn. She is a human ranger. She is in Hupperduke out of a chance for research. She's a member of the Artisan's Guild, and there's something there that can help with what she does. Um, she also, she is a very curious and mischievous individual. She also has a, technically, a pet. She has acquired a horse, which is named Ghibli. And I believe you happen to know one of the other characters quite well, correct? Correct. Who might that be, then? Lizana and Peleos have met before. So, acquaintances. Oh, boy, there's always drinking involved, no matter what. That seems well. Introductions aside, the sun is setting, and the nightlife is starting to begin. So let us actually get to the big... A chilled, misty night hangs over the industrious mountainside city of Hupperduke. The scent of a recent rain on the air as you walk the muddy path. The nightly festivities have already begun, with the elevated section of the city known as the Idleworks Shelf alight with colorful lanterns and streamers. The distant sounds of music and firecrackers echo from hundreds of feet up the stairs of the mountain. You arrive at the quiet, dark fields of the assembly yard, passing massive forges and partially constructed war machines. All the city's industry seemingly been abandoned for the night, while the workers of Hupperduke unwind in the celebrations of the upper city. Can I ask in what sort of stepping order you all find yourselves in? How do you walk yourselves? I am probably going to be the shortest man at the front. Well, that's for sure. Shortest dwarf, anyway. I am probably at the back. Anyone astride with Vaquil, or a step back behind him, which would be a step or two steps back, Palaios? Two steps. I don't want to get too close, I might tap something. And, Belenor, where are you standing amongst this? Probably further back than those two. But not the last spot, probably. And Lissana? Uh, probably in between the two of them, just looking at the site. People clearly like me. Well, you're the one probably forging ahead. <laughs> yeah. If you bite enough ankles, people tend to move out of the way. Honestly, oh. no, knowing knowing my character, I'm just looking for somewhere where I can fight someone, or, you know, do a strength feat. Oh, that'll definitely be on the upper hopper side. Though you'll still have to get quite there first. But as you do progress further through the streets, there does seem to be an older gnome uh, cleaning outside uh, one little stall. 
grumbling and mumbling to himself. Who's who's the good talker in the group? I'm just ju just wondering about this. Technically me. Cause, cause uh, I sure aren't. <laughs> <laughs> no, technically it's me. I um wave at the um old gnome and just casually ask or oh, say, "Nice evening out, friend." Ah. Evenings as well as you make it. Don't need to make a huge fuss about it. Wasn't making much of a fuss. Everything okay? I lean back oh, across the song no, and whisper. No, I no, don't think no, so. no, no, no. No, I just... Getting the place cleaned up here. Don't want to really make too much fuss up that way. Oh. Well, enjoy your work, and have a wonderful evening. Mm. As good as I'll make it. I just quietly muttered to the others, I don't think he liked me. Do you think? Kind of agree with you there. I don't think the gnome will like anyone. That's probably true. That's probably true. Eh, onwards. Anyone else for any little passing bits of conversation or questions at the uh, old they're known before moving on? Um, I'll walk up to the gnome and say, would I be able to make your day better with a small blessing from Bahamut? The gnome gives you a look up and down, just... Don't need no blessings. Just need to clean my little workstation here. Then I'll be home to relax. Are you, you always uh, going around bothering folk like this? Yes. Well, well each their own, where, I where, suppose. Where, where, where I live, most people bother me. Well... If you really want to bother someone else, uh, you can speak with uh, Watchmaster Bram Gulch Swaddle if you need work. Work can come after the festivities, I think. Yeah. Drinking first, work later? Yes. Yeah, you strike me as the one who works best when very drunk. I agree. I mean, he's a dwarf. He is? I hadn't noticed. That explains a lot. Well, I know I'm about as tall as a halfling, but I'm still a dwarf. I still have a beard. Fun fact, halflings would be just like the tiniest bit shorter than you. Not by much, though. So, Any uh, last drinking interactions? Time? Oh, drinking time, they say. Okay, drinking well, time. I guess that means we time <laughs> to transition a bit. Da, 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 da. So you continue on your way, moving through the Iron Lot streets to try to get towards where you need to going past the assembly yard in an attempt to try to get to the shelf before you get to the idle work shelf that is the peace of the evening is shattered by the deafening crack of a massive explosion that rocks the southeast part of the city at the base of the mountain shards of rock Spray the street a hundred yards from where you stand. Heavy smoke billows from a cavernous hole in the mountain wall. As you shake the ringing from your ears, six cloaked figures appear in the street. Running from the source of the explosion, 
and charging straight. Hmm. I thought we were doing the drinking first. Yeah, apparently not. How so, will you all react to this? Do, do these look like guards of the town? You can give me a quick perception check to see if First you recognize them. Natural one. Given their cloaks, uh, you can't quite discern if they are the guards of Hubberduke or not. Do the guards normally wear cloaks? Well, it had been raining recently. Maybe they're still uh, trying to keep themselves warm from the rain below. This is coming. They're coming from the explosion, right? From the explosion. Which correct. way is the explosion? Okay. The explosion is to the left. To the left, correct. Okay, I'm going to be a typical paladin. I'm going to stand right in front of it. Well, before you do, I suppose, oh. just set thyself back. Anything else from the other three? Uh, can we tell how many of them there are? Why, yes, I even said there were six. Did you? Was I paying attention? <laughs> nah, it's fine. No, I wasn't listening properly, apparently. Cool. Does it seem like they're trying to attack the people in the city? At the moment, you can't quite tell their intention. But if you would uh, like to uh, have an idea of that, you can give me an insight roll. Trying to find it on the sheet. Given the way they're moving, the way they're bunched together, and even sort of the some expressions that you do happen to see, uh, they do appear to be more on the on-edge, hostile things, that if someone were to get into their way, they might grow violent. I casually just unhook the crossbow and yeah. sort of don't quite aim it, but it's just like I could bring it up in a hurry if I suddenly felt that I had a need to. Hand crossbow this one. Yeah, I have mm. uh, war hammer in hand and ready to go into battle. How far away from us are I don't think you said that, but I probably just probably said that bit as well. Well, well we you can, can see, see how far they are on the map. I might have to move for that. About 45 feet. 50 feet? Okay. And what about you, Belinor? Well, clearly we're going for trouble. It's not our fault. So, but the trouble preparation is in order. Ooh, so everyone's preparing for combat. I guess it is time to, uh... Do we well? have time to position ourselves before we do that? Yes, that's to... what I was wondering. Nope, that would be in a sense of initiative right there, actually. Speaking of which... Dum, dum, dum. I rolled a 12. We were supposed to do this one by one, right? Yes, we'll do alphabetical, since that, that is works. quite easy. That works. Yeah, well, that was to be expected with a minus one. <laughs> you shouldn't have dropped dexterity. Uh, oh, let's focus there. So, Fritchie rolled a 5 plus 2, and Vixie rolled a 6 plus 3. And Fritchie, you need to click on. Oh, no, never mind. You've done it. Don't worry, I was able to add that afterwards. Oh. But let's uh, be just a
Neat. Why the fuck am I? Well. This is going to go well. Just half a tick. I entirely forgot the uh, the shortcut <laughs> in order to activate the combat track. Long. Goodness, hold. See the ah, auto thing that we were going to use for ending turns as well. That is uh, entirely available. Whenever you click on your token, you should see in the top left oh. the end turn oh, button. Okay, yeah, I have to click on myself first. I, I, I knew that. Well, first game tr first first stream troubles is what we're putting this on, right? Yeah. With so many layers of things we're using, it's normal for stuff to get uh, mixed up or confused. Yeah. We use Discord for voice, Roll20 to, to play, D&D Beyond for the well, we'll get used to this eventually. We just need some time. Quite so. Uh, give me a second here. Hmm. Isn't it not just slash ct dash start? It Was is that now. It? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's see. The kobolds will go first. And upon seeing one, two, three, four folks who are not moving, chatter between them. No witnesses! Oh. Well. He's uh, coming off. They're coming off really close. them seem to rush forward and a couple of the front will actually move forward a little bit further as
Oh, is it gonna try and Oh, it's also gonna try and hit them. That's not that's not ideal. The two at the back will pull out some hand crossbows and will fire upon the dwarf in front. Oh, fun. That 17. Will not hit. Ooh, that will just clang off your shield as you are able to bring that up. And the other one will. Also not a hit. And just almost as if it was just following the same line as its compatriot. Another crossbow bolt pings off the heavy shield of the dwarf. Cobalt's turn is... Palaios, you are up! And then it was me. Yay! I'm glad they didn't shoot at me. I had fun with ranged weapons in that test game we played. Uh, let's see. What do I want to use? I want... What's the range on that? Eh. Let's use... Nah. I'm going to cast Firebolt at... For one more or less directly in front of me, um, right next to the midget. You can uh, click and hold left to ping that particular. Oh, oh that's a boy! Thing. Can I make a guess that that hits? That's a 19 plus five for a 24. Can I make a reasonable guess that this hits? You can definitely make a good reasonable guess. You can roll damage for that. I'll do that. That's a 1d10 for a seven. 1d10 with a 7, as you... Ooh, can you describe uh, how you uh, conjure forth this bolt of fire? Yeah, I can probably do that. Um, so, I sort of just rub the fingers of my right hand to get... Left hand, I'm holding a hand crossbow on the other hand. I um, sort of just rub the fingers of the, um, my left hand together and just sort of flick at the kobold. Um and a, well, bolt of fire um, just sort of moves straight towards it and straight into its face. Oh, straight into its face as this into its face. inky kind of dark fire does arc towards this kobold, hitting it square in the face as you see flesh sear from bone as it screams, clutching its face and almost... Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, it does consume, leaving naught but a kobold head as it screams. First kill. In pain. <laughs> I killed something before I got killed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm done. I'm finished. We're good. <laughs> Bye. Any movement or bonus actions that you would like to take? Uh. Actually, do they count as no fair not bonus actions? And I can't do that as a bonus. I don't have any bonus actions I can take, I don't think. So none of that. But for movement I am going to move no, that would be stupid. Let's not do that. Uh over round here. Um, just to the other side. Not forwards enough that I'm in attack range of the other midget, but I get a bit of a better line of sight down um, the road place type thing. Alright. Alright, and you have a button to end your... That sounds like the sort of thing I always forget to press. You've never played a game of Talisman of us. <laughs> I always forget to press the button. All right, and this much, much taller figure uh, 
what you can barely see are tattoos upon a pale skin as this figure will dash between the kobolds and start heading to the other side. Bolt, it seems. That's what it's going to do. That makes a certain amount of sense. Vixie. Sec, I'm moving my character sheet where I can actually read the. I'm going to step closer to the kobold to my right and take a swing at it with my short sword. Go right on ahead. That's a seven. Seven total. Uh, this kobold will definitely duck down, and it's probably a bit difficult trying to hit these little quick creatures in what they have, but the attack does miss the Any other movement or bonus action stuff? Can I take another swing at it? You only have one attack available, unless you happen to have a second short sword in hand to attack with your offhand, I think. Let me just double check. I don't think I do. No, you would only be able to pull out one short sword at this time, so sadly, you only have one attack. I'm going to step backwards out of the way of it a little bit. All right, from stepping away from it and, uh, well, not disengaging, the kobold will use its little reaction to try and slash at you with its own little sh also with a seven which i'm pretty sure you are quite too deft as the little blade just sings in the air and does not That seems reasonable. Yep, and you have a uh, button to... Oh, you found the button. Bellinor! Vixie, Vixie does remember to end her turn in games. Indeed. So, considering the proximity, and considering one of them is far closer to us than it is to Bakwil, I guess... I can try attacking it. Which... I'm gonna risk attacking my scimitar. And I did it profoundly. <laughs> well, we're all rolling sevens today, except. Except me. I don't assume that hits, so. Rocky. Uh, you have to be uh, a little bit close. You have to be in melee range to hit with a scimitar since you're still not quite standing next to the creature as of yet. Oh yeah, there's some dice at that point. Then let's get in the melee range for that and roll it again. We're learning. Yes, remember to be close enough to swing before you swing, but a 17 will hit.
for six slashing damage as you scrape hard across this thing's cl It is still tan standing, but it is bleeding a lot of its own blood. What would have happened if it was bleeding someone else's blood? Then you would probably be concerned. A little bit. I suppose that to disengage that as well, I guess. Considering I'm pretty cool. So. Dial back. Neat. I mean, it need to disengage because it it took its reaction already. That is correct. Yeah. It did already take its uh, reaction and, and does not get into other attack of opportunity. Would you even have disengage because it's an action if you're not like a vogue or it? Or can you take disengage Co as correct. Bonus because of your species? Because you're a wood elf. No, uh, there are certain things, but because it already took an attack of yeah, opportunity, it, no it used its reaction. Yeah, it makes no difference. Usually, you would have to use a reaction, but some classes and some uh, other sorts of uh, races do happen to get that. Yeah, I thought it was a racial bond for the wood elf. Do I miss some other? Are you done? It doesn't uh, matter, it can't attack you. Be. But yeah. There's, there's a done button. My... No, it's not. Uh, oh. You do not get disengage as a racial feature. You get fleet of foot and you can hide when lightly obscured, but you do not get disengaged as a racial feature. Oh, it's fleet of foot, okay, right. Okay, then. Oh, here's the end turn. There you go. Vakwil, so, uh, it is your turn. I'm going to take a st step this way. And I'm going to shout in the general direction of everyone. You're all weaklings. Come at me. Do I need no to roll anything for that? You can roll an intimidate check if you'd like. Nice. They definitely do seem quite off put uh, by your very big cry. Anything else? Um, on top of that, I want to uh, look straight into the face of this uh, kobold in front of me and give it a big ol' a big ol' vac attack. Go for it. Fifteen will hit. As you bring out your Warhammer, which you have aptly named the Vac Attack, and brought down hard against this Kobold as you hear a crunch, but the Kobold is still there. And, uh, that's about my turn. Well, at least one of us is contributing. Quite so. Listen, I was trying to get them to come to me. I mean, it seems to have <laughs> 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 They do happen to have gotten to you. Interestingly enough, not a single one is flanking. No, but they do have pack tactics. Oh, of <laughs> course they do. <laughs> no, but... Uh, Rocky, explain pack tactics for the class. For those who do not happen to know, if a kobold attacks an 
creature, while there is a ally within five feet of it, it gets to roll the attack roll at advantage. So Vaquil will be soon greeted with four attack rolls at advantage. Advantage, okay. advantage means that you roll two d20s and you take the higher of the two rolls. Which means everything gets two correct. chances to not completely miss. Disadvantage is the literal opposite. You roll two dice and you take the lower. It's, it's probably fine. <laughs> As he says while everything is on fire. Let's go. Let's see this first kobold roll. Ah, uh, that was, um, uh, I forgot the last little bit. Pardon, as I fix the, uh, the notation. That's, a uh, 22 I make up. Well, well, the 22 will hit. Does not count because I did not use the right rotation, because that is an error on my part. So, uh, let's try that again, but... The midget gets to the... Never mind. <laughs> th th that's gonna hit. <laughs> Hit him harder. Five damage well. as the short sword finds a little slip in your armor to give you a nice little stab. And now for the um, second. Remind me to put horns all over my body. That will not hit. 15 as it does not pierce through the chain mail. Third attack. Also does not hit me. Still not quite finding the mark. And last and final attack. No dice. Oh, and here I thought things were going to get scary and dicey. As a player, but I'm no. sort of disappointed right now. And that is all that's these so kobolds can do as they're all trying to stab at you and just shouting, No witnesses! No witnesses! Elios, it is your turn. I suppose you're going to say I have to do something now. Uh... Who, who wants to play whack Who wants to play whack a goblin? Uh, kobold. <laughs> whack a bold? Whack a dwarf! Um... From where I am right now, that's a presumably relatively large tree in between me and the dude running away, yes? Quite so, yes. I think it is much. So, can I... Boop, 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 boop. Go and stand there, like, against the wall. Yes, you would have sight from there. That's neat. I am going to cast... Ray of Frost. I got a 21 to hit. 21 will hit the uh, armor class of this creature. I approve. Uh, of a note, its speed is now reduced by 10 feet until it starts my next turn. Oh boy. <laughs> and that's a 1 cold damage. <laughs> well, it tickled. It was much more interesting. The ray arcs <laughs> out and does happen to hit the very bottom of the soles of the feet of this uh, creature. <laughs> Causing it to slip a little and slow. I was more interested in the speed reduction and the damage at this point in fairness. Even oh, so, yes. a 1 is just a little bit distressing, even so. <laughs> I mean, that is a 12.5 chance for that, so it's just a d8. Yeah. Uh, I have 5 feet of movement left, which is... Not a good idea. No, by an attack opportunity from the thingy right next to me. Uh, so... I mean, it's completely possible that my shouting made them not care about you. Yeah. It's also possible that it's going to attack me next time anyway, because I've just, you know, tried to shoot its boss, or friend, or Fair. whatever. Uh, nah, I will end my turn there in the vague hope that it doesn't actually decide to immediately kill me. All right. Well, uh, now, albeit a bit slowed, this creature continues to run up the... And ends its turn. Uh, 
is it possible that I can get around them to start going after the person that's trying to get away? You might be able to, but that might provoke multiple attacks of opportunity. At least two by the looks of it. I'm gonna try just, it. Just, just, just realize that I'd, I'd like to not die tonight. Lucky for you, I'm not the healer this time. <laughs> this time. Yeah, I, I, what, do, do, do we look like healers? Yeah, I think you left me so bone. <laughs> Nobody needs a healer, right? I think it's very provocative. Yeah, do you... Just, just, just think about. I just before we do this, I want people to think about the fact that if I die, they're all coming after you guys. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, the other thing is, do we want the runaway to get away from us? I mean, do we care? Uh, do, re realistically, we we don't care that much they because we have us. no connection to this place. They yeah, they, us. These, he's these running away, these... so I slowed him down. I think. Yeah. We're only getting involved because we were attacked. We didn't start anything. Correct. Indeed. So That's so fair. Don't care as much. Okay, then I'm gonna step a little bit closer to the one right in front of me and take a. Go right on a hit. These little things That's are ten. definitely quite dodgy uh, and small. It does happen to see your short sword coming in, and it does duck. Well. For bonus action, can I step back and ready my bow instead? It takes a action to ready an action. But you Makes may sense, uh, but I can use, use the bonus the action mm -hmm. to step back. Uh, well, you actually use your movement to step back, but and you actually have the ability to freely get your bow out. Switching a weapon is considered a non action function. I'm trying to think of the right words for it. Free interaction. Let's go with that, because that makes sense. But because you okay. did dis did not disengage from the kobold there, it will make a swipe at you as you... That is a 22. That's probably going to happen. Oh. Yep, armor class is 14. <laughs> and that is 6 damage total. As because the bugger is right close to your ankles, it does aim up a little bit and gives you a good little gash in your... In your... you... your... your... you... you... uh, cut out. In the thigh. It's probably fine. Considering the damage you took, that's, more, that's pretty much all of the thigh. I mean, there are some important arteries in thighs. Just saying. Right? Um. So, Dave's I begging for healing. Vixie's much closer Both to dead. Both of you are kind of begging for healing right now. Hmm. I mean, I'm I'm more begging for things to die around me than than healing. And there is a couple of weak kobolds too. That is correct. Which ones have been hit? It's the one directly ahead of above whatever Bellinor. This one and and this one. Oh, okay, Dixie, yeah, those did you two. Hit, correct did you hit the one between me and Dave? Did that one actually get hit? No, you missed that one. Didn't you? No, I missed. Okay. Mm. 
I think considering the placement, it might be better for the situation to try to finish off one of the goblins, one of the kobolds. Damn it, I don't call some goblins. <laughs> so yeah, I'll racist. try to get Jeez. the first one, the one that is uh, right in front. Don't forget to move close. Yep, yeah. there we go. And that would be a scimitar. 23 total, I think, will probably hit. Roll damage. The, okay. For three slashing damage, and as this thing has already taken a good slashing from before, uh, it will grow a bit pale, fall to its knees, and fall back. slumped over oh. dead and as the second one falls the other kobolds begin to look quite nervous it's almost like they're outnumbered now any movement or bonus action deals Okay. okay. Land my All right. Well, then uh, you can end your. Fuck with you. Um. They're looking nervous, right? Quite nervous, yes. Um. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna drop my shield. And, uh... We're facing... Because now it's, what, 16 as opposed to 50? Uh, yes, it's 16 now. And I'm gonna start two hands bashing these, uh... These guys. Uh... The one, uh... The one, uh... uh in front of me again. All this right, two-handed war hammering. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> oh, that would be an eight. That would definitely be an eight, as it does see the wind-up, and while there would be a big thump against the ground, it is against the ground. I just sort of casually call over to him. Did the ground do something to offend you? I, uh, I, uh, I, I saw a bird. It distracted me. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look at the kobold in front of me and Whisper, that was totally meant to hit you. I'm so sorry you're still alive. <laughs> and ends my turn. <laughs> well, the kobolds, definitely concerned and looking outnumbered, will all take the disengage action and uh, take like the knights of the round table and run away. I am so passy. That. And that will end the turn. See, here's the thing. They attacked us, which is sort of really impolite, so I'm going to move up here. And attempt to probably now tragically miss Firebolt that one in the back of the head. Yep, tragically miss. 
That's an eight. As it goes whizzing right on by. Does it accidentally hit the guy in front? No. <laughs> oh, it was a little bit too high. <laughs> <laughs> Aimed a little bit too high. Does it hit the other guy way ahead of them? No, because it's still at the same height, and they're both short. Ah, uh, damn. And it would probably fizzle I mean, after its I called for destination. I mean, I called for tragic miss, so, you know. I probably gonna shouldn't do that next time. I'm going to consider that a win. Uh, and yeah, that's all. So, end of turn, which means I have to actually click on a thing and do a thing and stuff. Alright, and since it is the end of your turn, the slowness effect ceases on yes. this, uh... That is correct. ...individual, so... Uh, technically the start of my turn, not that it makes any practical difference in this case, but... Well, your turn nonetheless, it will get there. Unless it, it will turn. Oh, no. no. Uh, it, it'll turn back, wave its hand, and... Fog will coalesce. Well, that's and just that looks pretty. your vision. That looks pretty. Yeah, that's obnoxious. Can we get to fifth level quickly, just so I can pick up counter spell, so I can use it, and then we'll go back to first, if that's okay. That's that's just cheating. That's what that is. Lisana. So remember that one damage? I really do think it tickled him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think I pissed him off just a little bit? Um, alright, just a refresher here. My bow is not actually ready to shoot yet. I have to use the action for that, correct? Pretty much once you have your long bow drawn, you are able to use the attack action to shoot with it. Because it's just as easy as drawing an arrow yeah. and firing. Alright, then I moved closer. I'm aiming for the one closest to us. Alrighty. Oh, that's... 23, 23 will do. Yes. I know someone that can see it. Excuse me! Indeed. Oh, uh, you were supposed to roll damage, not the attack again. Yeah, I thought that I could just click on the damage uh, slash type. You gotta, yeah, <laughs> you gotta click on there. But, uh, six damage as you sink an arrow hard into this thing's tail. Just right. I'm not gonna have some trouble going to the bathroom. Eleanor, it's your turn. Hmm. It's a bit futile since they're running, but... Hmm. I don't think it's worth to actually try attacking them, considering they're running. So, just walking over to Lisana and uh, healing her seems worth. Healing touch has only 10 feet age, right? Much uh, touch cure damage. wounds is range touch. Uh, cure wounds, yeah. Healing so, words, uh, sub 60 feet or so. Yes, but less effective. Mm -hmm. And is a bonus Way action. Less effective, so. yeah. That's also true. I think Fritchie so, is the only one of us with bonus actions right now. Yes, I don't have Technically, any... uh, Lissana does because Lissana has a second short sword they could draw if they ever wanted to. Yeah, fair. Okay, so that's what we're going with. And casting to uh kill wounds. For four points of healing. Thank you. It's better than nothing. Hey, that's uh that's forty percent of their health. It's sixty six percent of my health. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's starting. It's on the good. So. Actually, yeah, I think. 
that's the only action it can take, so ending here. I'm uh, I'm just uh, gonna leave my shield behind and uh, get in front of him and uh, try and bash his head into the ground. All right, go for that. I think that. <laughs> hmm, that's a uh, twenty-three. I don't know. So... Six damage. Oh boy, that is a big old crunch as the head of the kobold is cave. So before we actually went live today, Dave asked Rocky a question, which was, we're using milestone XP, aren't we? Yeah, we're not using it, um, XP based. Um, you can't just murder hobo everything. Well, I'm an angry paladin, though. The dwarves doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm getting no XP out of this, but I'm murdering everything to death because I can. <laughs> That's exactly how this is going. Uh, listen, this is my first time playing a melee character, and I'm gonna enjoy it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> when he says melee character, what he means is he's short enough that other characters can use him as a melee weapon. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end my turn there. That's, that's excellent. Palaios, the kobold next to you is emitting a high-pitched whine. Oh, that's not good. Huh. Can I make a brief search, look around, whatever, see if I can work out what's making it make a wine? I'm, I'm assuming I'm satisfied it's dead, given that I literally burnt its skull out. Oh yeah, on your turn. Yeah. Once uh, these oh. other kobolds oh, start to run. Oh, it's not my turn yet, is it? Sorry, no, it's that turn. That's why you're telling me it's making a wine. That makes sense. I'll do that in a minute. Is it just that one, or is it all of them? Just that one, for now. For now. Kobold turns are done. Right. Where were we? So, yeah, investigation check, do a quick once over of the corpse. That sounds slightly wrong, but whatever, we'll roll with it. Literally. Oh, that was an 18 right up until it wasn't. That's a, <laughs> that's a total of three. You're not quite sure what is emitting that uh, high pitched whine from the kobold. I start but... wondering if I was. Just mm. hearing things. Oh no, everyone else can hear it. Yeah, I don't know that. I haven't said that. I'm just going to quietly say, or not so quietly say to the people immediately around me, not necessarily loudly enough for the midget dwarf to hear, but to these three, I think we should just move a little bit away from these corpses. And I'm going to move up here. Are you seriously saying that in a way that I can't hear it? I mean, you might hear. I'm not. I'm not deliberately saying it so that you can't hear it. I'm just making no effort okay. to say it loudly enough for you to hear. Like, you know, I, I'm not deliberately trying to make sure you don't hear. I'm just making no effort to make sure you do. I'm just saying it to the media. Ro Ro Rocky, would I be able to hear him with a normal talking voice? Yes, with a normal talking voice. Yes, it was pretty much okay. just like a passing remark, as opposed to you know no, something I said in I wasn't alarm. whispering or screaming it's like, or anything. It's like, hmm. Better step away from these corpses, I suppose. Better step away from these corpses! <laughs> yeah, just like, let's let's just back away a little bit now, and I will move up there, and... Um... Yeah, my was... Hold on, is there? Uh... Yep, no, I'm good. I will end my turn. Let me 
and 15 feet won't be enough to survive the impending apocalypse. <laughs> Killed because I only moved two spaces away from the corpse as opposed to three. <laughs> you all take 15 something damage. I'm going to heed the advice and step away. Like, how far can I get from this thing? Not far. You're a bit short. Very short legs. Don't forget to end your turn when you do. See, I accidentally is, put I, my I, character I... sheet over the end turn button. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in the top left, don't worry about it. The problem is, I kind of want to gr grab my shield before it explodes. That's going to go badly yeah, for you, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I mean, you might be able to I grab your shield, happen, yeah. you might be able to grab your shield, but whether or not Freechu feels like expending spell slots to fix you afterwards is a different question. I don't think I have a spell that can fix him up when he will be gathered with a spoon. Oh yeah, but... that... yeah fun fact. I think I'm we... going to move uh, away, probably behind you as well, somewhere around here. Hmm. Fun fact, we have no resurrection magic until ninth level. So the thing I need to think time. about, right? The thing I need to think about, is my character attached enough to that shield that he would go pick it up? Her answer is probably yes. <laughs> Sadly. We don't mind. Actually, would I be able to pick it up? You would be able to pick it up. But would you if pick it you... up? I mean, hmm. if you would have, dexterous enough. It's it's not a heavy shield. It's a tiny shield. I'm a dwarf. I'm a tiny dwarf. It was literally lying right next to you. So if you took it with you, then you have to say it. Well, did you specifically drop the shield, or did you stow it? Because that's a free interaction right there. No, I I, I dropped it he on the floor right it. here. He said he dropped. All right, it. dropped it. Dropped it then. So yeah, if I could have done that, then yeah, I pick up the children, then run on my way behind them. Okay. You only said the one next to me had started screaming its head off first, didn't you? Oh, I just said it was making a uh, oh, yeah, high-pitched whine. It wasn't screaming. Well, yeah, but it only for one next to me. Specifically, it was only for one next yep. to me. It wasn't the other two. Just okay. the one, yeah. Just thought I'd mention For now. That you have a free investigation check because it hasn't started screaming yet. Oh, me, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So, there's only one that we're actually actively avoiding right now. Because there's only one which is. I assume because I killed that one around before I, the other two died. Um. I think. I killed that my first turn, didn't I? Actually, did. And then no can one killed I, any... Yeah. Can... Can I hear the whining from that as well? Only from the one. Okay. Here's my question. Am I smart enough to realize that that might come from inside his body? You can uh, have a look at the medicine. You can give me a medicine check if you would like to figure I'm out gonna what's do a going on. I'm possibly. gonna do a medicine. I'm gonna do a medicine check on the one in front of me, just in case. An eleven. All right, I'm just trying to find the numbers here. All right, yes, you do actually uh, figure out that there is possibly something, and when you do a little bit of digging around in the dead kobold's body, you find what looks to be an acorn-sized foreign object. with some clockwork attached to it, and possibly something else. So I'm going to scream from the top of my lungs. We probably need to run further, way further. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to run as far as I can. And then right next uh, to the rest of us. 
Yeah. Uh, with that uh, still in, with that acorn still in your possession? No, no, no. I, I'll leave it in the body. I'll leave it. I'll leave it in the body. Important okay. to note. I'll leave it in the body. <laughs> so, how did your entire party die on the first round? <laughs> well, Dave dug a bomb out of a kobold's body and carried it to the rest of the party. <laughs> Well, yep. uh, the high-pitched whining on that kobold stops until there is a spray of blood and a small explosion uh, to everything around it in five. Five um, feet was that. Ah, that's fine, man. Oh, that's fine, then. Plenty of space. However... Listen. The dwarf the isn't smart, one okay? Begins to walk. Are you going to leave these all alone until they uh, go on their own, or is anybody going to investigate the body or uh, attempt to do anything I'm with those acorn size hops? Away, so I should be able to get there, search for body for anything interesting, and then move out of range in one turn, yes? Should be able to. I don't know what you say should be able to, but I also phrased a question that way, so that's self-inflicted. Well, the dice have the final say. Well, about the searching of... Yeah, that's how I could just blow myself up. You, you could, you, this you could is blow yourself well. up, yeah. Well, this is why I have three backup characters so far. I'm going to move over there, that's 15 foot. I would like to investigate this body, not specifically for the device, I'm just searching a body for anything interesting, who are they, who are they working for, etc. 20 feet, that's 20 feet. Gotta remember the diagonals. Uh, if I'm there, is that 15? This it is 15 it, it feet. It doesn't matter, because, actually, I'll go there anyway, just for sake of, that's sort of what I was thinking. But, it doesn't matter anyway, still have enough space to get away. But, um, unless this is a double bomb and it goes 20 feet, anyway. Um, I'm not searching for the device, because we've already seen what happens, I can assume reasonably well, I think, that they all have them, given that Dave was yelling about the other one. I'm searching it for anything else before its body gets destroyed, who it was working for, why it was here, valuables, what you know, anything of note on the body that isn't just a bomb. Then give me an investigation check. Investigation! Preferably not a two. No, it's a seven. That's a seven. Not able to quite figure out much. Uh, the only thing of note that you do happen to see is that there is red mud on the feet of the... Red mud. Would I... First of all, I'm just going to move over there and then there. I believe that is basically the rest of my movement. It's whatever. Um, would I know what the red mud is? Or anything? Would I recognize where it comes you from? You would not know. Okay. Uh, right, I think that ends my turn, which means I need to click on the button and click on the button. It is Lysanne's turn. Lysana, bored by us all investigating for six seconds or so, has fallen asleep. No, thinking. Um... Isn't that the same thing? Depends who's talking. I feel personally attacked. No, your character was attacked. <laughs> My character wasn't, I'm fine. I mean, you also have time to investigate the body if you can get there and get out of range with your movement. Well, I mean, this one isn't whining yet, is it? Correct, that one is not whining yet. I have marked it with a little symbol for it to be whining. Oh, yes. So you have I a little bit more than more to... than six seconds on that one. Yeah, it's going to be on my next turn, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to move over and investigate.
You find the same deep crimson mun caking its feet, but on a cord around its neck, hidden a little bit underneath the armor, you find a lead key. And of course, there is that little acorn sized, from what you now know, explosive on its body still, as it has been uh, dug out. It looks like it possibly could be disarmed if anyone was able to have the correct tools on. What sort of tools are we considering correct tools for this? Do we know? Why tools used to disarm things like oh. locks or well, other mechanical possibilities. So, so like cooking utensils? Like thieves tools. <laughs> oh, no, I don't have any of them. I'm going to step away from it again and let the others know what I found. What was found was that same mud and a key. Please tell me you took the key with you. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Pretty key. Puts it carefully back. Eleanor. Hmm. I don't have thieving tools, so... That doesn't help, but do you have anything that can tell me what that mud is, or anything extra about? Actually, do I have even time to search that? This one you do. <clears throat> hmm. I do, but do I have any skill that would be worthy for that? Or will I learn nothing about it? Well, if you want to approach it and uh, look at it further, you can roll me a nature check. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try approaching it. And roll your nature. That should be terrible. You don't quite have an understanding of what's going on. Perhaps someone else may be able to know uh, the significance of this. Mm. So without finding anything, I should probably also Step aside as well. Which I think concludes what I can do for my turn. Um, <clears throat> since I'm completely willing to let smarter people figure things out. I'm gonna, uh, uh, just in case, I don't really c care about how I feel, uh, use Lay on Hands on Lasana. Do I have a general idea of how hard she is, Rocky? Oh yeah, you have uh, the general idea. You can see the, uh, the size of the bar. Yeah, but is that probably, one or can two you see the HP? Numbers? No, I can't. Mm. Oh, that would be two. Okay, I'll give her two HP. Thank you. I made a slight little misread. Uh, it would be uh, Tinker's tools to disarm. Wow, and now it turns out all of us have Tinker's tools, and it's like, wow, that's weird. <laughs> like, really, yeah. No, that would have been Still. utterly no. hilarious. That would have been quite good, right? Uh, it makes no difference. Uh, Rock, not Rocky, her, her health in-game isn't, upda isn't updated yet. Got it. Don't forget to take the... Uh, oh, yes, you take two from that. Um, do 
I do anything? Um. I mean, you just did. No, I'm, I'm just thinking. Um. We can all hear that. It's for cogs clicking. That's fine. Red dirt. Can I... Do, can I just... Thinking about where the red dirt may come from is an action, isn't it? Uh, that would just be, you know, now that you... You would actually need to be a little bit closer to examine the dirt itself. And you, haven't an actually, you haven't actually looked at the dirt properly, I think, have you? Right. Can I, can I, can I think about where the dirt came from? Yeah, you can. Nature check what? as you have a good inspection. Uh, just a reminder that is twenty feet to get there of your uh, twenty-five oh, feet I'm, movement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> just a reminder, you're already ready wounded. Play a kill from a dead goblin, kobold, whatever. It is. From what you Does can that think help? about, that's a uh, 21. <laughs> that's, that's a 20. natural 20. <laughs> that is a natural 20. Sadly, skills don't crit, but, but you definitely know that the... Uh, but you do happen to know that definitely this deep crimson mud does not belong from this area. Let me see if I can't find a little bit more. Can we have the what three words address of this particular clay, please? Or red mud? All right, well, let's I, see. I, I, it I, is I'd, not I'd like mud, the consistency but and everything. it is actually red clay. And it's definitely not found in Hubberduke. You would need to find someone a bit more familiar with the area to specifically tell you where this mud is. Okay, well... I'm going to step uh, back again. Uh, guys, clay. I'm not good at remembering things, but it's red clay. And I end my turn. The one at the bottom will cease its whining and explode. Well, at least it's shut up now. And the acorn on that. this kobold begins to whine. I have no Tinker's Tools. We've already got everything of interest off the body. Um, Just going to uh, sit back, let that one explode? Yeah, pretty much. Is anyone interested in this one? I'm not. I don't think so. Do any of us actually... If it, Should we just say if any of us want to do anything before it explodes? Because I think we've got all we can. I saw something on its neck when I was close to it, correct? That was the key. You did. You, did that you that would that, be that the key. Was, that was the key, and you took it with you. Okay. We hope you took so it with I you. So I did already take that. <laughs> then no, there's nothing else that I want to do. Alright, nothing else. So the acorn will whine and leave that kobold in a bloody little red. Oh look, it matches the mud. Just wondering, just just for reference, how long does this this cloud hang here? Ooh, it is staying there for a while. It has not dispersed yet. Okay. Do, does it look like something I should definitely not step into? It looks like quite <laughs> thick fog. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking, does it look like something I should definitely not step into? He told you what you it looks like. You can give me an arcana check if you would like to discern the magic of it. Oh, this should be good. That's a nine. Just, you can't quite tell. This sort of magic isn't quite your thing. So uh, I'm I, I'm a I'm a dumb dwarf and I I'm 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 like standing next to it. I I just stick my hand into it to see what happens. When it you does, stick your hand does. into it, it does look like that your hand just disappears into deep thick fog. 
you can nearly not discern it in that fall. Oh, fun. And I step into it. And I'm just going to stand there. When you are in there, you are effectively blinded with how thick this fog is. Oh, excellent. Uh... <laughs> uh, can I guess which direction it is to get out of it again? Oh yeah, you can definitely trace your step back. Okay, um, I'm the, gonna get out of it. The rest of us just hear a smack as he walks into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, Rocky, you should so have made him roll survival for that. It would have been hilarious. So, that's it. So, um, uh, I'm not that cruel. What, if you walk inside <laughs> that, you can't see. So that's a thing I learned. Have you never encountered fog before? Shut up. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Obvious. I just muttered to myself in infernal. Oh dear, these people are idiots. <laughs> none, uh, none of you understood that. I'm, 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 I'm not dumb, but I'm not smart either. Belinor, you actually do recognize the effect, though. As it is something capable to you. And you may have done once or twice before. This is a fog cloud. Can confirm D and D has really good names for spells. They're very descriptive. Yes. Very descriptive. But this is a conjured fog cloud. Definitely quite thick and definitely a bit more. Uh, I guess you could say useful for getting a getaway. As oh, you think? <laughs> question. Yeah. Just, yeah. just a general question. How did the kobolds run through it without, without running into each other? They picked a direction and kept running. I mean, fair. <laughs> but, but if you. <laughs> I mean, but, but listen, if you close your eyes, it's also very hard to run straight. Yes, they saw the road from before, and they just continued forward. Okay. I'm just making sure. I mean, valid question, but yeah. Slightly valid question, yeah. So what can I discern from this fog? Probably that you can do it. It's magic fog. Well, after all that commotion and the three explosions, uh, numerous citizens and members of the Crown's Guard uh, respond to all this commotion, followed by a gnome in some armor. Let's see what we're looking at. Do they do this before or Finette. after our break? We are. Hey, does anyone remember the name of that one gnome that, that, that we definitely got the name of? Yep. Absolutely. We didn't get the name of it. And you I didn't introduce gnome. yourselves. I just labeled it as rude gnome in the notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think we... No, 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 not that one. The one that the rude gnome told us about. No, he just said to go talk to Watchmaster. Yeah, well, as the, uh, the gnome, as the gnome, as the uh, crown watch uh, gnome in the heavy armor steps forward, it's like, all right, all right. I'm Watchmaster Bram. What's going on here? Who are you? What? But we can figure out the answers to those questions and any further interactions after our break. Rocky, I, I have a general question about that fight. Yes. How's my dragon doing? <laughs> oh, uh, he's stayed very safely buried in your pack. Okay. It's Baha is fine. It's been quietly shitting itself all the way down the inside of your armor. There is probably a small little smell after that first explosion. <laughs> ah. 
Ah. All right. Well, I do, yeah. I, I, do, I, do, I, yes. I do want to make a quick note that during whatever this, this watchman is saying, I will be feeding the dragon. Bits of former kobold? Uh, yes. You, you realize that this means Lazana is not going to be paying any attention to the Watchmaster, right? And? Well, there is no bits of kobold left. They, there is just red spray, because remember, those were explosives. Explosives with a, uh, you know, were they bombs of five foot radius. Though? Because there'll still be little bits of. It was flesh. an acorn sized thing that made an explosion that big there is they became a fine red mist i mean i have i have one day worth of rations i can take a few small bits out of it and give it to my dragon i'm sure quite so but back to uh getting back on back the, to the watch master yes back to the back to the back of it all right all right who are of you and uh what you see Uh, 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 you are the uh, Watchmaster, yes? I, I am Watchmaster Bram Gorch Swattle. Uh, and who are you? Uh, my name is uh, Peleos. I was traveling with, uh, along the street with my companions here. We were going to um, get some drink um, in your fine city. Um, and we heard a loud bang from that general direction, and we saw these um, creatures uh, running down the road. There was a um, n another with them that ran on past that escaped. It cast the made prey to the um, fog thing cloud um, that we that you see over there. Which direction did they come in? Did they come through the fog cloud? W w like from that map? Did they the come up behind other us? other way from the cloud? Yeah. So where the, the where the kobolds came from? They came from that same direction. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, the um, other. Um, person um, ran off that way and created this fog cloud. Um, they got the kobolds attacked us, so uh, we defended ourselves. We killed a few of them, and then they just exploded. I see. I do see. Well, hmm. All of you. You're adventurers, aren't you? I can kind of tell by the way you're dressed and, uh, Likely by the sounds of uh, what you did here. So, are you adventurous? Yes. Uh, personally, I am a uh, uh, personal courier. I am on uh, leave currently, but I travel alone through the country. So I, I know you know I, def I have to defend myself sometimes, but um, not so not so, so much an adv adventure as such. But sounds mm. uncivilized. The rest of you, what about you? I mean, I like to fight. And I like to protect people. Looks like it, given the way you got yourself dressed and what you're holding. So, if that's what makes an adventurer, then yes? I mean, uh, adventurer might be stretching it a little. I do like protecting people and heal them if need be, but I guess maybe. Well, if it's a bit of a stretch, how about we make it a bit of a bigger stretch? Uh, what you happen to have witnessed was uh, a runaway, a prisoner of war escaping. No idea about the kobolds, though, but uh, likely something else that has to do with, but that was a goliath named would, Sken Zabris. Would we know about the... how much would we know about the war? Would we be immediately able to assume why it's ever from the Green Dynasty, or would we not know that much? I assume we would know something. Uh, you wouldn't know specific... you are aware of the war. It's kind of been going on for a little bit, but you can kind of assume. What, what would would I know, because I'm actually trying to get into the army? You would be a bit more familiar, yes. So, so he was a a, a, a Kreen, then. I thought. I thought. But, uh, how, okay, that's dis disturbing. Mm, not, not all. And, well. Uh, to be a bit more frank, uh. Give me a half. A... Hmm. 
skin would be she. And, my, my well, apologies. this, but different reasons to hold them specifically, but, you know, they may belong to the other side, but it's not just of one sort that the, uh, that the dynasty has. Some days you can never really tell, but I have no idea about those kobolds. I just know that we got a, uh, a prisoner of war and I have a bounty out of 500 gold to anyone who will hunt down and bring Sken back, as well as investigate who was responsible for breaking her out. Uh, dead or alive? I would prefer alive, but if it comes to it, as long as you can bring her back in some capacity. Alive okay. is preferred. Okay. And if you do take the contract, I will offer half of it up front. Uh, that, 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 um, we could possibly... Um, I mean... Can, can, that, I mean we could could, we talk about it? I, I, I think we could probably talk about it. I Discuss think. it among yourselves, but I will need a yes or a no. I like gold. Gold is nice. Gold is nice, yeah. I just hear this in the back of Dave's head. I love gold! <laughs> <laughs> plot twist for Master... Um, plot, plot twist for Watch Master has detect bots. Um, God! Um, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's quite a lot of gold. That's quite a lot of gold. 250 um, up front is nothing to sneeze about. No, that's... That, that's a lot of money. That's a, that's a lot of money. It's about on, twenty-five. Yeah. That's about twenty-five times the amount I have. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we don't. If we get killed, though, we don't get. Then, I mean, if the dwarf gets killed, then um, I suppose we can have it share his share. But um, um, if we all get killed, I'm not sure we get to keep the money. Which, I mean, that was only like what f five five kobolds. <coughs> what, what but if the upside. Oh, the upside is, is that we might get stronger on the way there. Level two. Level two. Uh, <laughs> that, 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 that. I like the sound of it. I, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a lot, lot of money. I'm, I'm in, I think. I'm in. Elf. Bram just, Bram just stands there, just standing, tapping his foot. Little clank, 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 clank. Elf, what do you think? Everyone... Yeah, we're in. I, I think that's all of us. I just turn back to uh, Bram and um, just say, yeah, we're in. Ah, good. He digs around in a pocket and produces a copper and gold badge. This will show that you're working under my authority. You can use it to help get the information a bit more easy. Just out of curiosity, you, you, I assume you know the area around, like, where we are, right? Hopper Duke. I, so... Not you, too yeah. familiar, no. Not too familiar, but you, would you know where red clay comes from? Red clay? I wouldn't specifically know. I'm no uh, geologist, I'd say. You could probably uh, talk to maybe someone uh, who has a bit more natural knowledge. And if you're specifically looking, uh, I think you can speak to someone at Lay of the Land, uh, the herbalist shop here. And if you want an idea of where you might want to go first, uh, you could probably, as he points over to the smoking hole on the side of the mountain, a gear hole prison. Ah, where have I escaped from? We should definitely look into that. I'll, I'll put the herbalist shop name in the party notes. Hi, that was Lay of the Land. Yeah. Well, 
Better get going then. Uh, we should uh, um, the the um at first half of the money. Oh, um, be be right. Before we, the money. Be before we walk walk away. Aye. Let's keep a let's, yes. Um, keep just a, one second. I'll get what you need here. He eventually digs around and produces a sack, and hands it to you. Is it all gold pieces, or...? It is gold pieces. I make that 62 gold, 5 silver per person. You won't be able to split it up, because there's no immediate change, I'd say. Yeah. Um, should we split it up when we get to rest? We can sort it out properly then, or when we... Um, Put it into the party inventory. Party inventory, no. aka my back pocket. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's gold. We can just make the pseudo dragon defend it. That's... <laughs> that works. <laughs> uh, yeah. Congratulations, Dave's dragon actually has a reason to exist. <laughs> uh. We dump it into party inventory for distribution later, assuming we're all still alive. Now um, the question is if we're ever getting it back, but you know. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we we um we we should go in and um investigate the prison. Uh, it seems like the first port of call. I suppose we're missing this evening. But um, for, is. Rocky, did you say the festival's tonight or tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. Okay. We, we, we... They're just having the general party upstairs. The pre, the pre drinks. The pre drinks for tomorrow as opposed pre party to... the party. Yeah. It's yeah. Every night is. Yeah. Like... This is this is Hopperduke. Every night is either the party, the pre party, or the post party. Every single yes. night. Yes. Work hard, Hopperduke... play hard. That's what Hopperduke does. <laughs> It's a 12 hour work day followed by a 12 hour party day at night. Um, we should um, uh, we should investigate the uh, prison. Um, see if we can. Um, the, the yeah, what, what, I've turned around to. What time sort of, of day is it? It's still probably evening. Okay. Cool. I, we, I sort of like turn from a watchmaster and look at the others because he's given us some money. It's fine. Um, for now, um, we, we should go in and investigate the prison. See if we can. The, he's, the watchmaster said the kobolds. Um, he, he didn't know where they came from. I assume they were not prisoners. We should see if we can. Um, wow. Um, we should see if we can work out what actually happened at the prison. First of all, uh, Before Rocky, they... the, pseu hmm? the pseudo dragon is inside my armor, right? Uh, he is inside your pack. Okay, inside my pack. Okay, I'm gonna show the pseudo dragon the gold and just say, you can protect this now. <laughs> and Dave's the treasurer. Mm. <laughs> protect. By, by proxy. Belongs to you? Uh, us? Half one tick, please. I mean, officially, I don't think it can really speak to me. I think officially it can say s simple things. Magically communicate simple ideas. Well, it was... And images. Yeah, it's just like... Yeah, it would be like... Possession. So like, possession... Your... Yes. Gives a little yeah. nod and just... Just... We'll you, guys, you, guys, you, guys, you guys can't hear it. So, I mean... Can we see that so he's it's just so... given 250 gold to a fucking dragon? Well, not a dragon, just a tiny little pseudo-dragon. Yeah, we're never getting that it's, back. Its creature type is tiny dragon, can I just point out? So Yes, but it has pseudo in front of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can we see... We don't necessarily know that, because we haven't interrogated the dwarf on that yet. Um, can, so, can, yes, can we yes, see there, there that is, he's just given all our money to a much, fucking yeah. dragon? You pretty much do happen to see a tiny little teal draconic head tilt its head towards the dwarf as it's given the money, looking down, looking back, 
sort of gives a nod and drags the uh, the whole pouch into the pack. Uh, we, 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 you know, we are getting that back, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he's protecting it for us. It's fine. We'll get it, I hope. He, he's a bit, he's a bit, I don't, I'm not always sure what he thinks. Someone make a note the dwarf owes us 250 gold minus this car. <laughs> Listen, as, as long as I treat it well, it will give it back. I just muttered to myself in tiefling, this is going to be, in tiefling, in infernal, I know what I mean. Um, this is going to be unprofitable. Um, do we have anything else, or do we walk towards the prison? We're going to the prison, I think. I'm, I'm assuming stores aren't open anymore. Most places are kind of shut at the moment. Yeah, so the prison it is. There might be places around, but, you know, most of the industry has gone up to go party. There might be some folks who stick behind for, you know, any stragglers, or for those who are a little bit too tired to party and still want to take a little bit of extra cool so yeah we head towards the prison it's easy to see the metallic sheen of many tall steel plates affixed to the mountainside the outer walls of gearhole prison moonlight and still smoldering fires frame the billowing smoke that pours from a gaping cavity in the rock and metal marking the violent escape route taken by the Goliath and her accomplices. There are various members of the Krause Guard on site and uh, are keeping, you know, any onlookers and even you currently away from the scene. Um, I, I think this is where we showed a badge. I think we showed a badge, yeah. I added it to my other possessions on Beyond because it seemed like the thing to do. Alright, well, uh, you can give me a... Uh, charisma uh, persuasion check at advantage because you got the bat who's leading or do we want us all to do it or I think I think it's we're a... at a point where you're leading well um, I walk up well, to I could be someone with charisma. Well, yeah not you then um, I walk up it's, it's not the also not me I walk up towards the guards assuming where everyone else is following behind I have the badge just like in my hands um, and I will roll this um, and I say we uh we have been sent by the watchmaster to investigate. It's like, is that a five or an eight? Yeah. Oh, well, that's that uh, looks like it's like that looks like it's landed on the thirteen. That's what in in normal D and D would be a cocked dice, and it would be re-rolled. Well, because you actually showed the die, uh, not not the die, but because you showed the badge. I just wanted to make you roll it in anyways, but the badge was all you... <laughs> yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm just saying, that's a cocked die, it's not fair. Anyway, um, we have been sent by um, <laughs> the Watchmaster to in investigate the um, prison break um, um, of... I can't remember the Goliath's name, um, which I'm sure is in, in the notes. Um, it's not in the notes. Scan? <gasps> scan. Is it... Um, is... Scan? Is it scan? It was scan. Scan. Uh, we have been sent to investigate the prison break of the uh, Goliath scan. Scan. Their name. Names are hard. Um, um, if um, we could be permitted to enter to investigate what happened, if that would be okay with you, please. They uh, do step aside, seeing the authority of the badge, and just wave you forward. A yes. ten-foot-wide hole edged with twisted steel and jagged rock opens up from a pile of rubble. Beyond the hole is a badly damaged stone prison cell, little more than soot-stained walls and overturned bed charred on one side. A thin skylight above the hole matches alongside it in the steel wall, and was apparently the cell's window. A mangled chamber pot is embedded in the right wall, where an, elf in, long... detail, <laughs> <laughs> where an elf in a long leather coat is pulling it from the stone. She pockets three charred pieces of paper from the brass pot before turning and acknowledging your presence question before we start talking to her the blast mm. was it a blast out or a blast in 
Like, was it an explosion that started inside, like the actual pattern of the blast, was it an explosion that started inside the cell and ripped the outside out? Or was it an explosion um, to blow the way in? That would definitely be an investigation check. Yep. I uh, when so. you get to inspecting it. Oh, we not Can we up. do a group? Can we, oh, you're just outside a... of the scene. Yeah, we've sort of just walked we... up, I suppose. So can we do a group investigation check on that? Uh, you can. Just give me a moment here as the uh, elf sort of looks down at you, just looking fairly tall in herself and in her own studded leather. It just looks down, so he gives her a shake of the head and smile. Ah, oh, business. Oh, let's see. What are you doing here? Ah, before I do, I am Yinra Emberwyn, and I heard this commotion. And, well, let's just say I've taken it to coming to get to this bounty myself. I've <laughs> already finished my work here, and you can have yourself your own luck in finding Skin before I do. Did we get that name down? Because I completely half heard it. Yinra Emberwind. Got it. One of us pays attention. Yes. Um. Oh, are you a um bounty hunter? Uh, then. Quite. Yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have my own leads to go. You seem fun. <laughs> Dave rolls for attack. Um, I just sort of nod towards her and sort of move towards the interior of the cell or the edge of the blast, you know, that sort of area. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, do remember that she did pocket three charred pieces of paper from the brass pot. Yeah. Um, yeah so so uh, 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 the, the, the less charismatic dwarf will grab the, the arm of the dwarf and say, of the elf, and say, so uh, what did you grab out of the pot? And it will be a, it will be a firm hold. It is a firm hold, and she looked at you and takes her arm away and sort of it is my own business as you should take away for yours now do not touch me again else I will call the crown's guard for assault in my own investigation is Belayos going to tell me to back down Nope, he's ignoring what's... Yeah. Question. Now, where did, did we see mm -hmm. where she put the paper? Oh yeah, she put it in her pocket. Which pocket? Like, uh, is it back pocket, inside her jacket, or something else? Oh, it would be just one of her pockets. I'm just going to generalize. Well, Are you wanting I'm about to, to say, perhaps... Can uh... I try and pickpocket it, but I want to know where it is first. <laughs> Well, you, you saw which pocket she put it in. I'm not going to say which pocket because you know the pocket already. But because she is currently engaged in conversation, you could attempt a I'm going to try and check. pickpocket, yeah. Do I get advantage if she's in conversation oh, and distracted? Oh. Mm, no. Uh, but there is a DC and she will not notice you because she is currently engaged in conversation. This is going to go well. That moment when you wish you'd actually taken proficiency in sleight of hand instead of something else. Oh, that's... 19 plus 3. That's a 22. You take a piece of paper without her note. Nailed it. I'm now, really now, do you, yeah. now, now do you tell me to back down? Um, yeah, so I, I just like... So I don't get leave, myself leave, arrested. Leave, leave, leave the lady alone. It's no good to get arrested just after we've... Um... Um... Going for uh, t at least t temporary favor of the uh, watchmaster. That won't help okay. anyone. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I apologize for my um, my um, sh short companion. He's um, not 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 the most um, sensible of um, people. Sometimes he tends to overreact. She will just give her own little huff and move on the way. 
And now I will show you the burnt letter fragment. Why are you not? I am an ally of your com blah, 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 no questions. Patreon following humbled main stand back, I think that's oh stand back, boom. Yeah, it definitely says stands back. That bit definitely says stand back. Um, though I haven't yet told the others that that happened. That I nicked for paper, I just got him to stand down. Lol. We can we sort of move into the cell to do a quote unquote proper investigation and then I get the paper mm -hmm. out and say and I get the paper out and say Um how irritated do you think she'll be when she realizes she doesn't have this anymore? And I just hold it up and give it to I don't know who's is everyone around or has the other two stayed back because they're being I, suspiciously I quiet. I think the uh I think everything's if you're all together in the uh investigation of the scene currently. I just sort of lay it out of my hands then so everyone can see it. And yeah, how how annoyed do you think she'll be when she realizes she lost this? How what I, can we okay. assume that I assume Dave's public <laughs> per, um, passive perception is less than 22 right now. Probably. <laughs> but you but oh okay, I'm not going to ask questions. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Would that work? That was a good roll. Quite so. Quite so. Now, I suppose you can investigate the uh, bit of an area. Uh, I'll help whoever is investigating. Uh, who has the highest intelligence? Um, Dave and I have the lowest intelligences in the group. Just saying, the other two have the higher intelligence modifier than us, so those two should investigate from a mechanical thing and given that we've done all the legwork so far just saying well uh, there is the bed and the rubble to investigate and we will proceed to investigate that rubble alright then give the me uh, investigation can... check on the rubble is it uh, an advantage, advantage because I'm helping uh you can either help him to have him roll advantage, or you can investigate on your own. I want to help. All right. Well, then, uh, whoever you're helping gets uh, advantage. So. So I'm helping Belanor. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm rolling with advantage for Belanor. A 19. Well, from what you can tell at first is that you see signs of multiple simultaneous... Well, you investigate the rubble and you see that the explosion came from inside the room with most of the stone and steel having been blown out from the inside. Uh, you also note signs of multiple simultaneous explosions at various points of the inside. Additionally, you make a discovery within the loose rock. A strange, flat automaton the size of a dinner plate. It appears to be made from iron, resembles a crab, and is damaged beyond the point of functionality. Its size does mean that it would have fit through the skylight. That's intriguing. Yeah, that is indeed intriguing, and knowledge that He's being passed to the party. The, the good part party. is... Yeah? The good part is is that we're in Hupperduck, and I'm guessing they know about automatons over here. Oh, that would be very fortunate, yes. Anybody investigating the beg? bed? I will. Anybody also, or... Oh, never mind. Okay. You find that it is burned only on the side facing the hole, as if used as a barrier to protect from the blast. With that check, you find a jagged, fist-sized shard of bronze lodged in the bed. It smells strongly of sulfur and burned blasting powder, and doesn't match any other objects. Also telling the rest of the party. Okay. That's, um, 
so this automaton, it, it can we, when we're just looking at it, although it's obviously damaged beyond use or whatever, we can tell that it would probably have been able to, you know, climb in through the skylight or whatever. We can tell. Yes, yeah. like, the, the automaton was thin enough to come to the skylight. I did so, say yeah, I'm, that was made good. Okay, so the automaton brings a bomb, probably like the ones that were in the kobolds, maybe a bit, well, bigger. Um, and the note, you read the note, he gets back, the cell blows. Where did the kobolds come from? I mean, where any? I mean, well, we know we know about the red clay. So, but were they right outside? They can't have been right up against the prison because the, uh, no one mentioned any um, guards, did they? Like, um, sorry, um, no one mentioned any um, guards getting attacked or killed, other than like. Well, they... they were all in. In robes, so people might have just confused them for halflings. They're kind of tiny. That's true. You, you you fit in quite well here. It's a city full of short people. Um, okay, so they blow the cell. They all escape. Obviously, we encounter them and they leave the city to somewhere with red clay. Yes. Uh, Rocky, the festival, is that an evening thing or is that an all-day thing? Is it going to be work as usual tomorrow? It's going to be work as usual tomorrow. Okay. So, I guess tomorrow what we have to do is we have to find a tinkerer to see if they know what the origin might be of this automaton. We need to go to the shop called The Lay of the Land to ask about red clay. And possibly an explosive expert? Well, you could probably ask some of the guards here or other locals that are around the place where you might be able to figure out what's going on. Get a few extra leads. That's, that seems um, reasonable. So, uh, what are you asking about towards some of the other folks? We've established that my character is not a good idea to to walk around yeah. and ask people things. Yes, oh, which Lazana is going to point out to him. Maybe just... someone else should do the talking first. Yeah, um, the short one doesn't seem to get on very well with um, others so far, unless they're giving it out, unless they're giving him alcohol. There's alcohol. This is Hopper Duke. Right. So, what question are you asking around? Because you have the automaton, the explosives, and that's about it. I mean, we need to find an explosive expert, honestly. We probably won't find an explosives or automaton. Or, or we won't find an automaton expert until tomorrow at this point. They're probably halfway drunk. Yeah, but we, we we can probably ask people if there is one yeah. nearby. You can find the location, the guards, at least, where you might ask later. Yeah, the guards might know about the um, explosives, so should we go and ask the guards? They might know where we can talk to someone about automatons as well. So should we ask the guards about um, automatons and explosives? Yeah. Well, you should though, ask the guards. These people seem to be li taking liking to you more than they are to us, so might be better. That's fine. It's, they, they, look, they look up to some of us. It's, that explains a lot about the dwarf. Um, so, yeah, do we walk outside and go and... Um, I walk up to one of the guards with um, the badge, sort of, not like waving in his face, but just conveniently visible. Um, 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 excuse, excuse me, officer. Uh, we, we've um, been tasked by... Um, yes, we know. Um, uh, what, what are you asking? Um, thank you. Um, we have, we, we've um, found, come across some traces of um, the explosives we think were um, used to 
um, breach, breach, breach the cell. Um, do um, you know of anyone who might be able to provide us with some expertise um, in the vicinity um, regarding explosives and also possibly automatons? Um, would you be able to... Do you, do, who, who would be the um, go-to? Um, well, for the first part, uh, there's only one sanctioned creator of uh, such things, and that's the Firemark facility, as opposed to the other one. Uh, you would want to go and see about Master Maker Clef Tinkertop, but his shop in the other work shelf has been closed since the war picked up. So you might be able to talk to his daughter Risa, uh, who works on designs down in the Builder's Plot. Uh, was that Risa? Sorry. Risa. Risa. Cool. Risa in the Builder's Plot, and the was that Fire Mart? Did you say? Fire Mark Fire facility? Mark. That makes it sound much less like a supermarket, in fairness. Um, <laughs> um, I sort of make a half bow, which in his case means I'm still about four times taller than him. Um, in his uh, to towards him and say uh, thank thank you very much for your assistance. Um, we're um, grateful. And on you get you got your job. I got mine. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, and we leave. Question mark to the I follow. Yeah, I, I think I follow. Being very careful not to interact with the guard in any way because we'll get arrested. Yeah. Dave just grabs the guard. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I was actually thinking about know. asking him to drink with me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I uh, think we may have done all that we can for today. Everyone we need to talk to will be at festivities by now, I suspect. Um, Perhaps. Never know till you try. Can we be at festivities? <laughs> if you would like to call it an evening and go for the festivities, you may. And, you know, have um, whatever rest I, I, I'm more... Are either the two locations suggested on the way back to the Billing Ball? Let me do check that. Like, are they, or, you know, reasonably, are we going to have to go in completely the opposite direction or something? Three locations. There's also the, uh, the uh, uh, shop. store. Store. The shop. Yeah. Just having a look. See, actually, the uh, the lay of the land herbalist shop is actually on the way back to uh, the Bill and Bull. Let me actually pull up a map of Lower Hubbardook for you. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, we have a token on the map to see where we are. Yes, I'm trying to find uh, where that might be. Tuesday, stop being so demanding. Try. Oh, that's the prison in the bottom left, then. Oh, yeah, that's the road we had to fight on right next to it. I recognise that. Yeah. I recognise that road. That's where all the exploding things were. Yes, this road right here was where you were. It's almost as if it's directly on the route from a prison to outside the city. Quite. Yeah, that's How silly curious. talk. That's silly talk. I mean, it's kind of a detour. Well, as for the herbless shop, uh, the herbless shop would be located here. Okay. And where's the uh, 
In? Always the question the on Dave's mind. would be all the way off on this side of thing. Oh. Okay, so that's a bit of a walk. Uh, and do we know where the other two, the fire mark and... Builder's things, plot? I, um, yes. Fire mark would be here. And the builder's plot would be here. So those two tomorrow in the lay of the land today? That, that seems uh, workable. That actually doesn't work. I'd, I'd like to treat my wounds and drink. Wh which, which of those is for higher priority, you might ask? Drink, drinking. Yes, I, th I thought as much. All right, well, we will hold off on any further continuance at the time. We're getting close to our uh, cutoff time. So we will see exactly what you learn from the herbalist and from the other two areas of interest. Ben Next. has a much more reasonable cutoff time than the others because his head's so much closer to the ground, everyone has to bend down to cut it off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's different to be the joke of short jokes. For <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like you didn't know this was coming when you picked the midget dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> like, Fritchi made his elf as tall as he possibly could. You made your dwarf as short as you possibly could. It's like, like you didn't know this was coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, this was episode one. There will probably be many more, at least until Dave just kills me and I rage quit. Um, it will happen. Probably. <laughs>